There are some amazing security settings that Apple gave us are disabled by default and some clever ways to not only increase battery life longevity of your iPhone, but as well increase overall battery life during the day. So let me walk you through the best settings you need to adjust right now. Starting off with security. You don't know how many people still to this very day still continue using the simple four pin passcode screen for your iPhone. It's extremely easy to see somebody's passcode and memorize it this way, which is why it's highly advised to swap this to the new alpha numeric screen, which all it does is just makes it harder for others to see what you're entering and typing in as you get a normal keyboard. So by hopping over into the settings and going to face ID and passcode, enter the credentials and click on change passcode. Here, enter your passcode. And then on the very bottom where it says passcode options, select the custom alphanumeric code and then just enter your password. Go ahead and confirm. And now whenever you unlock your device, you get this as the passcode. Now, ever since iOS 17 latest update came out, your previously used password would still be continuing to be saved on your iPhone for 72 hours. So if you accidentally do forget your password, don't worry, it's not the end of the world your phone will allow you to use your previously used passcode to have access to your phone. But if you like to overwrite this and just delete that entirely, you'll find it at the very bottom where you change your password where it says expired previous passcode now and you can delete it in case you know somebody who you were trying to hide your device from or something like that. Now using an Apple Watch on your iPhone is probably one of the best ways to properly secure your device because your Apple Watch can actually unlock your iPhone. It only works when the iPhone is actually really close by to you too. This is perfect in those type of situations where you just don't feel comfortable to enter your passcode when there's a bunch of eyes around you. So this is another creative way you could bypass the need of doing this. You'll find this ability in, in the Face ID and Passcode section. And this section where I hear where it says unlock with Apple Watch, just go ahead and enable the Apple Watch you want to give this ability to. And now your Apple Watch will be able to unlock your iPhone and you have the full freedom to override it on your display in case somebody unlocks it nearby you. Now, lost device protection was something new that was also added for iOS 17 not too long ago. I highly recommend enabling this. What this basically allows you to do is it's a security delay that basically if somebody would steal your password and they have access to your iPhone, instead of locking you out of your device, it's not going to let them do it because your iPhone is at a non familiar location like at a bar, a sports bar, a mall or something like that along the nature. So it's going to prevent somebody from locking you out out of your own device. It's a feature that's there and I highly recommend enabling this to prevent anybody from having access to your device and locking you out. Now a forgotten feature that I strongly advise everybody to take advantage of is the silent unknown callers. Especially if you get a lot of phone calls daily from telemarketers and such, instead of them wasting your day, you could just have this turned on so your phone was smart enough to decline those type of incoming calls and they don't interrupt your day. Of course, they could still leave a voicemail if it's a real person, but I have nothing but good experience having this feature on and I'm surprised a lot of people have this turned off. So if you like to enable this, go into your iPhone settings, go on phone, and here is where you go in to enable silent unknown callers. And this will simply just filter out spam callers and will only allow verified numbers that haven't been reported as spam callers to be able to call you. But again, if it is false alarm, they can still leave a voicemail or text you. Now you can do a similar thing to like text messages as well, especially if you're subscribed to a bunch of like ad articles that uses text messages, like promotions, website updates and such like that. You can still receive them, but you can filter them out where they won't interrupt you. You'll find this in the settings section on your iPhone and scroll into messages. And then down here, you'll see a filter message option. Enable this. And now on your iMessage backtrack, you'll find it right here. Everything is categorized. You even have an unread message section as well. Now let's move into the battery life settings. You see one of the most efficient ways to increase battery life that I notice is shorten the auto lock duration. You see by default, it's set around two minutes. So if you go in your iPhone settings, go and display and brightness and then where it says auto lock, I find the best results is around 30 to a minute. For me, I find this extremely useful because I work in an office space and most of the time I just have my iPhone alongside my computer with the display on and I always casually forget to lock the display. Thanks to that shorter duration, makes a massive impact to the battery, trust me. Another great impact to your iPhone can be the always on display. As time makes a video, the iPhone 14s and some, well, some iPhone 14s and 
iPhone 15s have always on display capability. You can turn it off completely. This will also definitely impact the battery, even though it does slow down the refresh rate, but having it off completely definitely does help. But there's a cool in the middle sweet spot that I discovered, well, I personally like using, and that is disabling the wallpaper. This way those color pixels are turned off and I just have a simple black and white display. But if you have an Apple Watch, you may find that it's not really necessary to have your always on display disabled. So if you enjoy viewing the time, seeing your notifications on your iPhone, even while the screen is locked, like I do, with an Apple Watch, if you leave your phone behind and you walk away, your phone is smart enough to detect that you're no longer in the room, so it will turn itself off, like the display would just turn off, preserving battery life that way. And if you have your iPhone in your pocket, you don't really need to see the clock or your notifications. Utilizing the external sensors that has for like Face ID, LiDAR sensors and such, your phone is smart enough to detect that it's in the pocket, so it will also turn off the display this way. A lot of people tend to forget that the iPhone has that ability. Now the low power mode. In case you don't know, low power mode is amazing. It definitely comes in clutch, especially if you're trying to get as much charge as possible under a single charge. You know, those very busy, it's gonna be a long day, you're not gonna be home for X amount of times, so you're trying to squeeze as much battery life as much as possible. Enable low power mode. I like to have it in my control center. If you don't see it here, super simple to enable it. Go in control center settings right here in the settings section of your iPhone and look for a low power mode in here. This is where you go in and add it and you can enable it right here. But there's times when I'm going throughout my day and I take out my phone, it's already below 20% and I just now get that low below 20%. Would I like to enable low power mode now? Of course I'm gonna enable this but there's an actual way you could allow your iPhone to automatically enable low power mode when it goes below 20%. So in case you don't know what low power mode basically does, it decrease the auto lock time to the lowest setting, which is 30 seconds. It'll disable background refresh apps, and then it will also lower the refresh rate of your iPhone, easily increasing the battery life of your iPhone's current charge. And then it also will turn off automatic downloads as well for like app updates. So low power mode is super beneficial. But if you like to have it so your iPhone does it all automatically, go into your shortcut apps and go into the automated section. Tap the plus icon on the very top and look for battery level. Make sure you check mark fall below 20% or you could customize it with your own personal preference. But to keep things simple, I'm just gonna leave it at to fall below 20% and then check mark run immediately. Tap next and in here, search up low power mode and make sure it has turn on low power mode. And then tap done. And now your phone will do it all automatically. Now forgotten one is seeing if your phone has battery optimization enabled. I'm still surprised how many people don't have this turned on. If you love your device, if this is gonna be your like over five year old phone that you're gonna have for five years, you need to make sure you have optimization enabled. Because what this basically allows you to do is, with this mode enabled, your phone will monitor your charging habits. So if you wake up like around 8 a.m. as an example, and you leave your iPhone charging overnight, it's gonna stop at 80% and won't resume charging all the way to 100% to be ready until like six o'clock. This way your phone is not at 100%, straining the battery, decreasing the longevity and harming cells and such. Because just like electric cars, leaving your car at a 100% charge will damage the battery. Same applies to iPhones, which is why it's gonna stop at 80% and will only charge up to 100% when it's time for you to start your day. So that's what basically battery optimization allows you to do. It just allows you to extend your battery life of your iPhone much longer. But there's a new setting you could enable that I'm personally experimenting right now where you could cap it so your iPhone will automatically always charge to 80% and will leave 20% as a buffer, maximizing the longevity under that single battery for your iPhone. So if you plan on having this for a long duration, I do strongly advise enabling 80% instead. Now, I'm personally experimenting with this because I have always had battery optimization enabled on my iPhone 15 Pro, but if we look at my battery health, it's already at 94%. So what the hey? So I have had 80% enabled for a week now, and the massive thing I've noticed is my iPhone always runs cooler than before. So I am keeping an eye out on my battery life overall health, 
and seeing how slower it will actually degrade with 80% as the cap. So if you watch this video months later as I've, after I upload this, feel free to comment down below and ask what's my current battery life health. I'll keep you updated in the comment section. Now these next ones are more settings you can find on your iPhone, but they're more of a little bonus, such as if you use Apple CarPlay, you know, whenever your device connects, it'll immediately resume playing whatever audio you're listening to, like a YouTube video, a song track, and etc. I personally have it so that it's just gonna pause. It's not gonna play unless I purposely hit play. So if you'd like to enable this on your iPhone, you'll find it in the shortcut section. You'll need to go into your shortcut apps and go into automations. And then go ahead and click on CarPlay and select Run Immediately. Tap Next on top and then you're going to select New Blank Automation. Then select Add Action and from here you're going to type in Pause and scroll down where you see Media, Pause and Play. And now on the Pause and Play tab, select Pause and then tap Done. Now whenever you hop into CarPlay, this is immediately going to pause the track right away. It may play audio for like 2-3 seconds but it will pause it immediately. And then last one is a pretty cool one and that is the capability to store your credit card information on your phone, not on a storage device. You see, if you ever check out on Safari, you know how awkward it is just taking out your card, just to enter your card information to then check out. Well, you can actually fill that information on your phone so you don't have to use like a cloud service or anything like that, like what Google Chrome has and such. It's all stored on your phone so you have maximum security. By going on your iPhone settings and going to the Safari tab where it says autofill, there's a section for your credit card. You can enter your credit card information, so now you can just tap on it, verify with Face ID, and you don't have to take out your credit card, especially if you're out in public and you're just trying to order a to-go meal somewhere. And just like that, there you guys have it. Those are some amazing settings for security purposes, battery life improvement, as well as some bonuses right there that will make your iPhone experience a whole lot easier. Now, in case you missed it, if you wanna figure out how you can play some emulator games, I do a full tutorial right over there where I walk you through the basics, the cool tips and tricks, and some hidden features that the Delta emulator has to offer. So be sure to check out that video right over there. Again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.